So let's have a look at the basic syntax of the structured query language. This is the basic structure of an SQL query. We have a SELECT clause, we have a FROM clause, and typically we also have a WHERE clause. The FROM clause tells what tables are accessed in this query. The WHERE clause gives a condition for the rows in these tables to be considered. If the WHERE clause is absent, it means that all of the rows are considered. And the SELECT clause tells what attributes we want to include in the output table. With SQL, just like with every other programming language, it's very important to practice, to get hands-on experience with the programming language. So in the online system that goes along with this course, we have the same example database that you've just seen on the slides. We have the students table, we have the exercises table, and we have the results table with the same content as mentioned on the slides. And we can practice in this SQL query testbed here. So we can execute queries on this example database and immediately see the result. Let's start with this very simple query so we select the student ID and the first name from the students table. There's no where clause given, so all of the rows will be considered. Now let's execute this query. We get a table that contains all of the students IDs and the first name. Now let's have a look what we could add as a where clause. We could, for example, add a where clause that says that we want to have only those first names and student IDs of students that are called last name Simpson. Let's execute the query again. And now we get as a result a table that contains a student ID and the first name of all the students whose last name is Simpson. The FROM clause of an SQL query can be understood as declaring tuple variables. So here in the FROM clause we say that we want to query the table exercises and we give as a name for the variable we give the name E. So E is a variable that iterates over the rows of the table. So in each step, E will be assigned one of the rows of the table exercises. So you can understand this query also as follows. You can think of it in the following way. We have a for loop where we have a variable E that iterates through the rows of the exercises. And for each row E, we check the condition given in the where clause. So we check whether the category of E is equal to homework. And if so, then we print the attributes that are selected in the select clause. At any point, if you want to try out the query that you see on the slides, you simply copy the query. Then you paste the query into the online system and say execute query. And you immediately see the result. We have a table with two columns, number and topic, and we have two rows, one with number one and topic logic, one with number two and topic SQL. So let's have a look. Are these really the topics of the homework exercises? We have two homework exercises indeed, and they have topics logic and SQL. For every table that is queried in the from clause, one tuple variable is defined. So for instance, in this from clause, we say that we want to query the table exercises, and we give the tuple variable that iterates of the rows and exercises the name E. In this from clause, we only say that we want to query the table exercises, but we do not give a tuple variable name for this table. Then the tuple variable has the same name as the table. So this from clause is basically the same as this from clause, where we explicitly state 
that the tuple variable should have the same name as the table. The importance of the tuple variables is that we can use them to access the attributes of the table, the columns. So in this case, we have a tuple variable named exercises. So we can access the attributes by saying exercises.category, exercises.number, or exercises.topic. If we give an explicit tuple variable name, then we can no longer use exercises.category. Then we have to say e.category, e.number, or e.topic. Let R be a tuple variable and A an attribute of R. Then, as we've seen on the last slide, we can refer to this attribute by writing R.A. If R happens to be the only tuple variable that contains the attribute A, then we can also simply write A. Let's have a look. In this example, we have a query that accesses two tables, students and results. We call the tuple variable that iterates over the rows in students S, and we call the tuple variable that iterates over the results table R. In the select clause, we write category, number, and points without explicitly writing r.category, r.number, r.points. The reason we are allowed to do this is that category, number, and points only appear in the results table. They do not appear in the students table, so it's clear that these attributes refer to r and not to the tuple variable s. Likewise, in the WHERE clause, we write FIRST and LAST without writing explicitly S.FIRST and S.LAST because FIRST and LAST only appear in the students table and not in the results table. However, for the attribute SIT, we have to be explicit because SIT appears both in the students and in the results table so we have to explicitly write s.sit and r.sit in order to avoid ambiguity. Let's have a look at one more example query. Here we query the table's results and exercises, and we have a number of attributes that are referred to without explicitly stating whether they refer to the tuple variable r or e. Now, for number, this is problematic, because number appears both in the exercises table as well as in the results table. If we look a bit closer at the query, then actually we see that for a human, there is no real ambiguity, because in the WHERE clause, we say that we only consider those rows R of results and E of exercises, where R.number is equal to E.number. So in the WHERE clause, the number attribute of R is forced to be equal to the number attribute of E. So actually, no matter whether number refers to R or E, this is the same value, semantically speaking. However, for SQL, this is not sufficient. It's not sufficient that this is semantically equal. SQL only has a syntactic check of ambiguity, and it requires us to explicitly resolve this ambiguity. So for every attribute, it has to be clear what tuple it refers to. So we have to write r.number or e.number, even though this will give the same value. 